Hi everyone, uh, I'm Kripa. I'm head of vehicle design at Ola Electric, and I'll be talking about uh, automotive design in the era of EVs. But before I get started, oops, I'm also between you and lunch, so I shall make it quick and painless. But I have to say something, uh, Chetan, wonderful to meet you. Uh, you are a visionary and a true pioneer in EVs and technology. And as usual, I loved your speech and that about technology uh, enabling the shift between or and and. And yeah, so true. And uh, exciting world that we live in. I'm so thankful to be in where we see this shift happening. Uh, thanks again. Um, so this was around two months back when Sumantra called me up and said, uh, come talk at ET Auto in Bangalore. So I was like, yay, great. And I said, OK. And then I totally forgot about it. <laughs> so I quickly put this together uh, yesterday. So uh, that's on the negative side. On the positive side, I've been working in automotive design for 26 years. So this should come quite easily. And the past few years has been all about electric vehicles. Uh, so here we go. Do I have a shifter or something? Oops, yeah, thank you. So uh, three parts to my speech. Uh, as I said, it's uh, uh, quite simple, and uh, I'll make it quick. But I have to start with future trends. Now, this is something that all of you here would know very well. So you must be wondering, why is she going to talk about this? Design is relevant in a context. You have to have a customer. Uh, so design varies customer to customer. Uh, you have uh, their needs. You have their usages. So I'm talking about the design of electric vehicles in this context. And this context, of course, is uh, uh, the post-COVID era. Uh, so here uh, we see uh, the, the big need for electrification. And what's really surprising for me, as I said, I put this presentation together yesterday. The context, a lot of it is global. I, I request you to calibrate it for India. Not very different. But for me, I think the bit that stood out is those charts of China. From January 2020 to the end of February, just a little bit more than a month. And the, the chart is amazing. And this could be our future with electrification. Not just of EVs, other things, of course. But uh, EVs would be something that uh, aids zero emissions. Uh, various governments are taking up policies from 2030 onwards, and this is a journey that we are all on. The other thing that we think will happen is uh, that of last mile mobility. Many reasons, drivers for this. One, of course, is a lot of companies offering work from home uh, opportunities, and of course, people asking for the uh, capability of working from home. The other thing that we think will happen, along with uh, things like last mile mobility, is uh, shared mobility. Now, the opportunity for uh, designers is to create an environment in, in a shared mobility space uh, where the use of, uh, well, compartmentalization is one. The other could be uh, aircon systems. It could be uh, uh, materials, sustainable material, materials, easily cleanable, because uh, users are going to demand a cleaner environment in a space that is shared. Uh, the other uh, thing that we see uh, happening, you can already see Cadillac, Lincoln Co. getting into this, is subscription services. So a little bit of millennials and definitely a lot of the Gen Xs are not wanting the ownership experience. They want to use different vehicles for different purposes and uh, are opting for things like uh, subscription services. Uh, we can see a lot of them coming up in India as well. Uh, Autonomous technology, we will see in the next two years a lot of level two, level three autonomous vehicles. Uh, but what I'm talking about is the uh, completely autonomous vehicles in geofence areas, like airports, like large campuses. And you can see companies like Baidu. And uh, uh, I think there is a shuttle service in uh, Brussels airport that's completely autonomous. I I've not used it myself, but uh, I've heard about it. Uh, again, in India, we have seen such services, uh, companies offering such service, services coming up. Uh, I spoke a little bit about um, uh, services coming up that was uh, subscription services. In many of these, I'm using that example, but in many of these examples, UI, UX, or your app is your first uh, design experience with a company. It need not be ownership of their EVs but it could be the UI, UX, or the experience that you have on the app. 
And that's becoming a very important part of design in this uh, world, post-COVID, uh, technologically advanced world of EVs. Yeah, so I was talking about the first point of contact. Uh, the other area of autonomous vehicles is, of course, in logistics. Uh, these are geofenced. It's your company. It's in an area that you are uh, very clearly aware of the, uh, the fence. Uh, and uh, we see a lot of uh, autonomous technology coming in this area. Uh, picking and packing robots in smart warehouses. And this is a big uh, area of future. I think that will uh, go directly into eVTOL. I know I'm talking about personal uh, mobility, but this is also a big space for logistics. Uh, again, um, I was surprised to find out, I didn't know this earlier, that uh, this is already being offered by Airbus in, uh, in a few places, uh, on-demand helicopter services uh, as uh, eVTOL. So uh, this is a very quick sneak peek into the future that we are designing for, uh, the trends that are happening. This is a very near future. It's happening already, and we see a lot of it happening. A recap, uh, electric propul propulsion for uh, zero emissions, for zero carbon. Um, we see uh, last mile mobility increase, shared mobility increase happening, uh, tailor tailored subscription services, uh, autonomous public services, uh, public transport situations, um, autonomous level two, level three vehicles, autonomous vehicles in logistics, and the rise of uh, urban mobility solutions, air, urban air solutions like eVTOL. Okay, so uh, with this context, what is automotive design process? You know, it's not very different from ICE, but there are some very critical points. I'll, I will talk about one or two of them. So design is a function that has to work with many, many stakeholders to create a product. Uh, so from package, package as you guys know is occupant package, suspensions, powertrain, all of that, all the way till brand, and design is something that needs to work with all these stakeholders. Now, traditionally, this is something that is an iterative process. So depending on the company that you work in, it could be uh, three to five loops that you work in to convert uh, a design to a product. However, with the uh, improvements or the advances in product development processes and with the digital tools that we have uh, currently, I think, um, the Altair gentleman, sorry, I don't remember your name, spoke about it. Uh, but there are so many tools available, digital uh, twin, a uh, whole bunch of uh, AI technology available, so that we can work collaboratively. This is a word that I've heard other speakers uh, speak today. It's very, very important. With the tools, with the improvements and processes, you can work collaboratively, collaboratively and just reduce the iterations to really just one. You can just do it in one step which is what we are following as a practice in uh, Ola Electric. So again, something that you're all familiar with, the internal processes uh, of design from sketch to digital modeling uh, to uh, digital visualization to feasibility to physical modeling. Now, um, and of course, uh, onwards to the uh, aspects that uh, are outward facing. This is delivery to product. Now. The models that are available, the digital modeling tools that are available, and uh, the ability to use virtual reality and mixed reality. We have some proprietary tools. I think the tools that are there already, plus along with some experience that you can build on top of it, it is really possible to make this very, very quick. You can speed up the process without losing any fidelity. With high fidelity, with high quality, you can really speed up this process. Uh, so I've spoken a lot about it. Let me give you a quick look at, is that my time? Am I, have I run out of time? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Volume? I'll talk through, uh, I don't want to sing through. <laughs>
Um, so no, no, I'm not over. I've got three more minutes. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, the words that I'm using, um, digital tools. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, one step back. Uh, you could see in that film. So the use of uh, uh, modeling tools, digital tools working collaboratively, working simultaneously, and using a lot of VR and MR uh, to, to do it with high fidelity, do it really fast, and do it uh, along with all stake stakeholders. In all our design, I'd like to talk about two, two things. We have a very, very sharp focus on, uh, on efficiency. I think Chetan spoke a little bit about it. Uh, I'm going to give an example of aerodynamics, but every decision that we make from a very, very early stage in design is about, for example, a metric is a range per kilowatt hour. And we are uh, brutal about it. You know, that's how we go about it. My time's up, just this. Um, this is a car that we were designing last year. You may have seen um, uh, this teaser. We showed this on August 15th last year, and uh, needless to say, I think the very next day, Bavish said that it will have a drag coefficient. I don't want to remind you guys about it. But when we were working on that itself, at the point of time that we were working on the emotive design, that we were working on the packaging, we were working on the feasibility, glass drop, uh, safety, et cetera, et cetera, we were also working on the aerodynamics. It's not that you don't do it, but typically you do it in a face manner, you do it iteratively, but what we are trying to do it is along with the tools that are possible are there today, do it simultaneously so that we achieve a drag target that is 25% less than what you would achieve otherwise and thereby making it more efficient. Uh, one more point, um, but I'll just skip it. You know, need for speed, I already spoke to you about it and I'll leave you with this last AV. Uh, I think day before yesterday, 19th, yes, day before yesterday, Bavish was talking about this. Uh, the need for, you know, we have these grand targets of zero emissions, but we can do that only if we bring out these EVs, along, of course, with the ecosystem at that pace. And uh, so we will be bringing out a lot of models at, at, at speed. And uh, I'll leave you with this, uh, AV. That's not just people sketching a scooter. Nope. That's the future being drawn right there. See, Arola. We are a company of dreamers that don't just stop at dreaming. These are dreamers that shape reality, shape the future today. No big wonder then that the S1 Air took all of 12 months from dream to machine. Those right there are top engineers. Building the prototype of hours and hours of debates, discussions, practical brainstorms, and well, Lots of coffee. Of course, we had a little help from our green friends. Just look at them go. The result? An accessible, powerful, yet nimble S1 Air. It's got everything you need and nothing you don't. Let's just say it's a joy to ride. The S1 Air is almost here. Coming this July.